Hi everyone, good evening. Welcome to APUN Industry Career Live Webinar Session. My name is Hasmira from Asia Pacific University of Technology and Innovation. I'm your host for today. Today is our second day. For those who have missed out our previous session, don't worry. You can always feel free to watch the replay from our Facebook uh, page and YouTube channel. APUN Industry Live Career Live, uh, Live Webinar will cover in the field of data science, cybersecurity, AI, engineering, actuarial studies, design, and fintech. Okay, while waiting for more people to come to join for our live session today, I would like to invite you to come to join for our APU e Open Day. Our counsellors are ready to guide you through all the pathway for your further studies. The topic for today's webinar will be the importance of the selecting uh, the right pre-university program to prepare for your future. For more information and updates, please visit for our website, um, for AP website at www.apu.edu.my and follow our Facebook page. Today, we are proud to have Dr. Savinder, Ms. Nelfi, Ms. Anuradha and our two students, Diraj Singh and Chua Zinyi from School of Foundation with us for the sharing session. Without further ado, I would like to invite Dr. Savinder. Thank you, Asmira. Hello, everyone. Okay, in this session today, my colleagues and uh, my colleagues and I will ha uh, will guide you to answer a very important question, a very commonly asked question, but very important question: which pre-university program to choose? Okay, so at APU we have foundation program and we have diploma program. Both are excellent programs. Yeah. I'm not just saying that, you'll be hearing it from the students afterwards. Okay, so um, like I said, it's quite a common uh, question. So uh, for that, okay, uh, like what you see on the screen, okay, differences between foundation and diploma program. So I'll quickly run through the differences so that, you know, you can keep this, uh, this few pointers in mind when you're making a decision. Yeah, like I said, both are excellent programs. So let's quickly go through this. Okay, the first difference would be the entry qualification. Yeah, so the entry, as you can see, diploma, three credits are required. Okay, minimum three credits or O levels. And for foundation, five credits. Yeah, so that's one thing you can keep in mind. And the other thing is the duration of the program. Diploma, two years, foundation, one year. Okay, because uh, diploma basically, all right, uh, for diploma, the first year of uh, degree level one is uh, is uh, is included in the diploma program. Okay, so that's why it is longer. And diploma basically, uh, usually students take diploma uh, because they sometimes don't want to immediately progress to a degree program. So if you are deciding to take a short break or to start uh, employment immediately after your pre-university, diploma will be your choice. Yeah, because foundation, when students get into foundation, uh, upon completing foundation, their three semesters, one year, they immediately progress to a degree program. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh, these are the differences where duration is concerned. Yeah, next, certainty. Okay, so we sometimes have students coming and telling us, you know, I just completed my SPM and all, and I don't know what to do. Not sure, I think I want to do uh, engineering, but I'm not so sure. I also like uh, computing. Okay, so for this kind of students, okay, foundation offers some kind of flexibility at the pre-university level. 
So supposing they start uh, engineering first after doing one or two engineering modules, they decide that, you know, engineering is not really my thing. I want to do computing instead. They, uh, we offer that kind of flexibility so they can still uh, go into the computing road. But diploma, usually students who come to us, okay, uh, or, or students who want to do diploma, they're a little bit more certain because the diploma program is a little bit more focused, okay? It's, it's, it's much more focused. Like example, uh, that's why we have like uh, the diploma program, like, okay, example, a diploma in finance, okay? Diploma in accounting, diploma in uh, software engineering. So they're very focused programs. Okay, so when you get into that diploma program, you will start, okay, that as, uh, that as specific area, okay, that uh, the area of study uh, very soon, okay, so you will get into that program. So that's why you can actually start working after that. Uh, um, uh, whereas for foundation, okay, after you complete that one year, then you choose the degree program of your choice, all right? Then uh, the other thing is about uh, experience, industry experience, uh, internship. Okay, so if you do a diploma, then intern you you are required to do internship for most of the programs, not all, but for most of the program you will get that industry experience. Yes, yeah, so internship is required for diploma, but for foundation it's uh, not required. Okay, it's quite a short program. But however, these uh, diploma students, they will be doing their internship later on when they progress to degree. Okay, financial aid. Okay, scholarships are available for both the programs. Yeah, available. Uh, of course, it depends on the requirements and so on. However, if you're looking into applying for PTPTN, then it's only available in diploma, not foundation, yeah? And finally, pathways. Okay, pathways is like uh, I explained earlier. Okay, so once a student completes foundation, okay, the student will choose one of the degree programs. Uh, for diploma, the pathway choices are uh, a little bit more narrow in the sense that it is very much focused on that diploma program that the student has taken. Okay, so in summary, these are some of the uh, differences. Okay, and these are some of the pointers that you can see. So, uh, okay, I won't go too much in detail, although I will show you in the next slides, you will see the, the some of the a few details there. Okay, like example for foundation program, these are the entry requirements. SPM, five credits, at least five subjects at SPM. IDCE uh, O-levels, five credits. Okay, CA and above and UEC three credits, okay, grade B and above. Okay, so these are the foundation programs. And then this is the progression of the SPM, foundation one year, then level one, level two, level three. And if it's found, uh, sorry, if it's uh, engineering, then there's another extra year. So these are the degree program areas. So as you can see, yeah, so there's a wide uh, variety there. Okay, so this is the progression, and next we will be looking at uh, the, okay, so this is how basically we end the foundation program, okay? We're very proud to say that, you know, we actually have this uh, appreciation ceremony for the foundation students, okay? Because uh, I notice a lot of universities don't really have this. So uh, before we hand over the students to the, to, uh, progress in their de degree to continue their degree program. Okay, we appreciate them. We, uh, we have this ceremony for them where we um, give them some awards or certificates for their excellent performance, okay? Academic and non-academic and overall. So this is something very motivating to the students. Students actually look forward to this. Okay, so just before they move on to degree. Okay, next you'll be seeing some of the pictures here. Yeah, this is our awards, uh, foundation awards ceremony. So this is basically for foundation and next for diploma. Okay, these are the entry requirements. I will not go too much in detail because I believe my colleagues from other schools will also be speaking about this, yeah? Okay, so this is the entry requirements for diploma and this is, okay, so the next one will be the uh, study progression. 
Okay, so diploma, once a student completes diploma, the student goes to degree level two and degree level three before the student graduates. And there'll be an extra year for engineering students. Okay, so students basically end with a diploma graduation. Okay, so next are some of the pictures here. Yeah, so there's a grand di diploma graduation here. Okay, so in summary, so those are the few differences. So now uh, I'll hand over this session to my colleagues, the academic leader, Ms. Anuradha, and the program leader, Ms. Nelfi. Ladies. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarinda, for the stroll over on our foundation program uh, for telling what happens within the four walls. Yeah. So Nelfi and I, we are both here to tell you all what happens beyond the four walls. So we always talk about learning beyond the four walls. So when we say beyond the four walls, what do we do? OK, so we do a lot of extra activities, extracurricular activities for our students, especially our pre-university students. So these are the four areas, if you could see on the screen cultural exploration and community engagement. We do a lot of cultural engagement related activities because I'm sure you would have heard of uh, Asia, Malaysia, truly Asia, okay? And I can tell you APU is truly Asia or perhaps beyond than that because we have got students from 200 over countries. Name it, whatever language you will have a speaker, most likely you will have a speaker of that language in the university. So with this kind of population, it is our obligation to provide that kind of environment for cultural engagement. So students are often engaged in social events uh, before MCO. Our main atrium is very busy. Uh, every now and then you have events. So a lot of social events um, are organized for students by students as well. And then moving on. A lot of emphasis is also given on team spirit and leadership skills. So when we talk about leadership, the only thing often comes in our mind is being a boss for an organization. But let us tell you, leadership skill begins at school level. If you didn't realize that, let us make this obvious to you. We need leadership skill in every student. It doesn't matter pre-university. Yes, we need it. Undergraduate, we need it. Postgraduate, we need it. Because leadership means if you lead a small group uh, in your tutorial sessions, you are a leader. If you lead a project, you are a leader. So without all these, you wouldn't be seeing the pictures that we're going to show you in a while. Okay. And we also tie up our modules, our teaching modules, learning modules with industrial visits. So students do participate in excursions because after that you will come back and you will look at case studies. We will do a lot of discussions during the tutorial sessions. Okay, in university, we usually have lecture and tutorials. So these are the areas where we focus on besides, you know, uh, teaching and learning that happens within the four walls, like what I was saying. Okay, moving on, SPCA. SPCA is an acronym that needs no introduction. I believe you agree with me. It's a nonprofit animal welfare organization which aims to prevent um, animal cruelty. So guys, if you look at it, we are here not just to care for human, but also animals. If you look at the pictures, these are all our students. Yeah. So these are all our students who volunteered to participate in this project. And we have been working very closely with SPCA for the past five years. So face-to-face -face activities, a lot of activities, students would physically go to the shelters to help out, to shower them, to walk with them. You know, a lot of activities uh, actually was happening until the lockdown, which happened last year, March, Nelfi, remember? Yes. Well, even after the lockdown during the pandemic, uh, you know, we still, uh, our students still continued their commitment at the shelter at SPCA. Um, they still go volunteering at the shelter, uh, but of course, following very strict SOPs. So yeah, we still continue this, uh, you know, this activity. And uh, 
Besides that, we also have very talented students at APU. As you can see here, uh, the students were enjoying themselves on stage, uh, performing. Uh, this was actually an, uh, an activity or appreciation concert, actually, uh, that was organized by the students. Uh, Anu, did you enjoy yourself during the concert? Oh. Of course, I think Nelty, by looking at these pictures, now the students will be wondering, did Dr. Sarvinder say anything about degree or foundation in music? Okay, guys, we don't want to mislead you here with these pictures, okay? We don't have any courses on uh, jazz theory studies or some introduction to music technology, okay? This is a project organized by a student um, who is very keen in music. And we have got to give that credit to this entire African students. You know, music and Africans, you can't separate them. They, 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 you know, they are connected in a very unique way. And students made us to understand that, or perhaps me. Yeah. So a student came in a proposal. He wrote lyrics, his own lyrics. He composed his own music. And he launched an album. So this entire event was his soft launch of his own album. And it wasn't just him. He got the entire uh, students, African students who are into music, and not just students from APU, but we also had participants and audience from all the universities in KL and Slango. And I think the Greece Milan as well. So they were there that night, and it was a huge show we had that night. So that's the, yeah, talent show. Okay. Okay, this is another unforgettable experience, you know. Um, I'm sure the audience there, you know what a cave is. Okay. So what happened is uh, we were busy printing posters, you know, to promote this activity. Uh, you know, that time before the lockdown, posters were still fashionable, you know, colored posters everywhere. Hey, join us, cave exploration. Students were promoting it, you know, on social media and all. And then we were waiting for inquiries to come in. We didn't have from this particular group, huge group of students, they didn't ask us where or when, but they asked us what a cave is. We were puzzled. We were like, what a cave is? Then we realized cave is not a geographical feature in all regions, just like how some, some of us, I'm one of it, we get excited to see snow. So they were like, oh, there is such thing. Oh, in this country, we were like, yes. Yeah. So what we did, we bundled up these 44 students. We got them on the bus and then they were, we were going on and on and on because it's about almost three hours drive, Goa Tempuro. And then... We told them to get on the truck. They were like, a truck? And Nelfi, remember that truck journey? <laughs> of course. And uh, well, the fun didn't stop there. Yeah. So the students actually came back and, you know, um, they really enjoyed the trip. And uh, some of the business students, they actually came up uh, with a follow-up project uh, on ecotourism. Well, I heard some of the design students, they even, you know, they even came up with a portfolio. Um, yeah. that was based on their trip. So that was really fun. And uh, well, we didn't stop it. Just, uh, you know, the, with the cave visit, we also brought our students to uh, exhibitions. Okay. So I'm sure um, you you have heard of Picasso, yeah, Da Vinci, uh, but it doesn't take a Picasso or Da Vinci to appreciate arts, right? So life is not just about, you know, technology, business, accounting, science. Uh, in fact, you know, we, uh, when we took our students to um, this art exhibition, we got very positive response. And not just from the design students, but even engineering students. So they were really, really looking forward to, you know, oh, when are we going to the next exhibition? Anu, did you... Well, what about you? Do you, do you enjoy art? Oh, when Nelfi, remember you said art exhibition and I was like, are you sure we're going to go for an art exhibition? And you were like, no, I think you should join. <laughs> yes. You know what, guys? Until you see a piece of art, you, you, until you 
stumble upon a piece of art, you wouldn't know the secret, the story behind the colors and the lines. So when the exhibitors, when the painters were explaining the symbols, the meaning, I was like, wow, there's this huge thing behind this color. So that was a very, very good uh, opportunity for me. I really enjoyed it. And as you could see in the picture, look at the smile on the students. Hey, <laughs> all beaming, yeah, from year to year. So that was our outing with our students for, you know, for that art exhibition. And now, after all the beautiful art pictures, you know, nice gallery, here you go, recycling project. The unique thing about this recycling project is this is actually part of our module. So a module is a subject, yeah, in, in university, we call it a module, all right? So if you go back to the presentation done by Dr. Sarinda, uh, you know, in, uh, in foundation, there are three semesters. The first semester, there is this module called Personal Development and Study Skills. Fashionably, we call it PDSM, okay? So in PDSM, one of the learning outcomes is to do community uh, project. It's on element of humanity. So this is a project proposed by students. So students came up with a proposal. They told us uh, we could work on this recycling project. Of course, we were there to give the support. And this group of students, they got the entire university to participate, all the students from the hostels to participate. And they just came up with these bundles and bundles and bundles of these blue bags and Nelfi and I and the whole team was like, okay, okay, now what do we do with these bags? Okay, because we've got a very beautiful landscape. If you have the opportunity, do visit our campus. And suddenly we've got these blue bags. Remember Nelfi, the blue bags? Yeah, of course. So the blue bags then end up in the recycling centers. So that's how our students played their part in, you know, saving the environment. So that was a really, really good job done by the students. And yeah, they are also looking forward to, you know, uh, similar projects like this to save the environment. And I'm sure being in lockdown for, well, I think almost or more than a year already now. Yeah, yeah I'm yeah. sure you have, uh, I don't know, have you been watching any new movies or series that you... You know, whenever you speak about Netflix, I tell you, I have no time, I have no time. Yes, time is still limited, yet I did, I did. <laughs> I'm sure the rest of you are also, you know, enjoying yourself uh, or have some time to spend uh, catching up on some movies or some series, yeah? And um, I don't know, perhaps you have come across, yeah, there's um, any uh, movies that revolves around human trafficking. Yeah. Um, well, sadly, uh, this is not just in fiction, uh, in, you know, in fiction, they are actually real. Yeah, so it's not just in movies that we watch about, you know, uh, human trafficking. Uh, but yeah, human trafficking is happening. And um, at APU, we actually, um, we organized um, a campaign, an awareness campaign uh, against human trafficking. And Daniel, do you remember what happened in this uh, this talk here at the auditorium? Yeah, if you guys could see the picture, yeah? the auditorium picture, uh, we got an invitation. They said, okay, go for a talk on human trafficking. So we were free. I was free on that day. I said, okay, I'll join. It's just a session where somebody is going to speak. You know, the privilege of being audience, you sit in the cold auditorium, enjoy the aircon. And uh, when the, the speaker displayed that statistics, you know, um, that was really uh, an eye opener. I still remember it says 2018, 2018, mm. not 15 guys, 50,000, 50,000 victims from 148 countries. So, you know, when you present figures, you become more serious. Immediately, you know, from slouching, we were all like that. Okay, what's happening? So that was a huge awareness. And then we were started, we started thinking of our mm. own neighborhood, of our yeah. workplace, are we safe? So the consciousness was there. So that was an unforgettable statistics on the screen. Yeah, definitely. Okay, orphanage visitation. To be very honest, I can't remember how many we have done because this is a non-stop event, a very popular initiative, not just by students, but by staff mm -hmm. as well. 
So we have a load of volunteers, especially staff who are very keen in doing uh, projects like this. And of course, we poison the students in a very positive way. And then we get a huge crowd. Sometimes even after progressing from foundation, they'll be in their undergraduate program. Even postgraduate, they still come back to us, miss, miss what happened to the home we were working on. And we said, OK, let's go. And they join us. And one common thing. Okay, you could see in this picture, the blue bag with the recycling one. I think, Nelsie, you better tell them what's in that blue bag. <laughs> okay, well, not to confuse with the blue bags we saw earlier. Yeah, these bags are actually loaded with, uh, you know, food supply uh, for the orphanage. Uh, so our students, uh, they, they prepared all the supply and, well, they didn't just, you know, drop them off, you know, at the homes. Uh, but they also um, organize uh, many um, activities with the uh, with the children at the homes, and they really enjoy themselves. Yeah, and they are always looking forward to more of these visits. Sometimes they even find the homes on their own, and you know they start organizing. And we were just you know just um, assisting them uh, with the projects. So the students are playing a big role in this uh, uh, orphanage visitation, and. Uh, well, um, besides uh, community work like that, uh, at APU, we also put a lot of uh, care on the mental health of our students as well as our staff. And uh, we often organize uh, mental health awareness campaigns uh, to get our students to understand uh, you know, the issues on mental health and also to provide some kind of a platform you know, for, for them to reach out to uh, if they need any assistance. Um, yeah, so here, as you can see, we organized uh, a series of talks, actually, a series of talks and even workshops uh, that were conducted by professionals. And also, um, we had some sharing sessions yeah, uh, by those who actually experience uh, such situations. Um, and well, uh, as you can see, it's a mental health awareness week. So it didn't just stop here. Uh, I know you remember what else we did during the week? Of course. I'm not sure if the audience could read what I have here. Um, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I learned to pronounce this word after this event. Schizophrenia. Am I right now? <laughs> Is my pronunciation right? Yeah. You know, uh, uh, we speak a lot on, we focus, we emphasize a lot on experiential learning, okay? What is experiential learning? We speak a lot on theories. Mm. Theoretically, we tell you a lot of things in the class. We have got lectures, we have got tutorials, we have got slides like this. But we also tell students, you must experience it. So during this uh, mental week, yeah, it's a week, mm. okay? It wasn't just a one-day thing. Yeah. We were called, the volunteers, the experts were there. Uh, thank you to Johnson & Johnson. They were our main sponsor. Uh, so they set up boots and all that. And one of the volunteers, an expert, she told me to wear the headphone. I did. Uh, um, and, and I just couldn't stand it. She told me to be on it for a few, five minutes, I think. I just couldn't take it because I was hearing so many voices. And then she asked me, how do you feel? I said, terrible. This is bad. Um, then she said, this is what happens to uh, schizophrenia patients. They hear voices. And then the awareness that we brought out of this campaign, this is just one of the things that I experienced. There were so many other experiential activities they were doing throughout the week. Mm. One message we gave to the students is, look, it's okay to have problems. It's okay to be in trouble. All of us have problems. All of us you know, sometimes we are in trouble. It's okay to be sad, depressed, but what is not okay is to be keep is to keep quiet. Okay, don't suppress. You must share it. Share it with the right person. So that was, uh, you know, a beautiful message. We made it so clear to the students, and I think Nelfi after that, students also came back. Uh, you know, we channeled them to the right people, to counselors and so on. Some of them, they open up to us. So if we yeah. can help, we do. Otherwise, we will channel you to the experts and we have all the experts in our campus. Yeah, so that's the mental health event. If, as you could see here, Grad 1 Career Fair, I'm very sure you could see the big name there in yellow. You see a big space. You see big crowd. And you also see big, iconic business magnets. And I missed it, okay? 
Nelfi met that person. Nelfi, tell them who you met. Well, the students really enjoyed this, uh, you know, career fairs. They get to 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 get a sneak peek at, you know, the corporate world, uh, you know, uh, the corporations, the organizations that are available. So even though they were still, you know, at foundation and diploma level, uh, you know, first semester, second semester, but they really learned a lot from this. And uh, yeah, some of the students even, you know, they interviewed all these uh, big names, you know, uh, one of the students actually got a chance to ask uh, questions directly to uh, Tan Sri Tony Fernandez. So that yes. was really, yeah, something very uh, memorable for the student also. They really, they got really excited, you know, for, for the chance to actually speak directly uh, to such a, uh, uh, such big name, yeah. So that was a uh, graduate career fair, and uh, now we're looking at community and you. So community and you is uh, is a project, uh, more of a sustainable project uh, uh, that encourages um, students, youth, yeah, um, to volunteer uh, and also uh, do a lot of community work. Yeah. So as you can see here, our students are very busy doing a lot of. Uh, community work around and yeah I know you want to uh, add anything on community and you yeah community yeah. and you is a, you know a big project where like what Nalfi said the focus is on sustainability yeah. so the message that we have given to the kids or to the kids yeah in the homes and yeah. uh, all the people is look you don't have to depend on other people on your survival yeah. you can come up with innovative ideas projects and programs where you can sustain. So that's where our entrepreneurship team got into this project and they started introducing plantation, they started introducing projects where it will uh, encourage sustainability, it will ensure sustainability. So they also don't feel very bad about taking and taking and taking from the community. They also have got that confidence, that pride that, hey, we can sustain so that made them to feel good and also we felt very good that we boost their confidence so that's community and you and we are already coming to the last slide on all the things actually there are a lot and a lot and a lot so these are the few that we are sharing with you you want to know more you've got to join us yeah experiential learning we can assure that to you so this is our river cleaning project one thing we fail to understand yeah Prosperity, yes, dollars and cents, but real prosperity in life, what brings livelihood to the whole nation is cleanliness of river. You mm. don't, can you imagine, you don't have clean water to drink. You can't because we always have clean water to drink. But if we don't take care of our rivers, we are going to have that problem. There are countries with this kind of problem. We don't want to be one of them. So here you go, another big project. We worked very closely with the council. And uh, whenever there is this uh, river cleaning project, they will contact us and we will get our students. Uh, we have uh, many students have been uh, volunteer in this project. And this is also one of our commitments to the nature. And we work very closely with the ministry, with the council to make this a huge success. So this is just one of it. There are a lot of other projects, tree planting and all that. And this is, uh, yeah, this is what we would like to share with you today. So what you have heard so far from us, yeah, from the head of the school, Dr. Sarinda, from myself, Anu and uh, Nelfi there, okay? So these are the teaching team. And now you're gonna hear it from the students, okay? So now I'm passing the baton to Chua Zin Yi. The stage is yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Before I begin, let me introduce myself briefly. My name is Zingyi, and you can also call me Shelly. I have been studying in APU almost two months, so I hope to share my experience doing foundation to you guys. After graduation from high school, I can deal with my colleagues very quickly and easily. I really didn't just learn a lot from knowledge. I even improved my soft skill a lot and became a student master in other people's work. I come from Malacca. I'm very happy to come here to study. When I arrived at this school three months ago, I fell in love with it. It's so beautiful and exciting here. And everyone is kind to me. 
this class feels like just one big family to me. I'm deeply impressed by the academic atmosphere when connecting to the website of FPU. In addition, I'm attracted by the degree program of software engineering and to improve our country's development of science and technology. As the proverb says, process is the activity of today and the assurance of tomorrow. If I have a chance to continue my degree study here, I would like to continue to accept professional training in order to get ready for working in the future. I hope I can achieve my goal soon. The arrangement of the cross here is very comfortable and flexible. I didn't feel much about this before and I didn't know it until the second month after I attended it. I just know how good the foundation cross is. For example, the EWL, which is Essential Work Application course, really brings me the whole concept step by step, so I understand it super. There are all a lot of information. I have to study it myself and then re-understand. Presentation, PowerPoint slides, group assignment, and also individual assignment are what no one will teach you when you are in degree, I think. Noting that PowerPoint slides are so simple. When you go to college, you will find that most people make slides very ugly and the information is very messy. Just be simple and clear. Visual ads are also very important. You don't need to be too artistic at least to make the audience comfortable. These are what my friend and I discovered in our respective foundation after graduating from high school. This is definitely the key. How painful I learned at the time, how lucky I am to learn now. My college life will be easier i believe after studying foundation because i met a lot of independent high school students which is uec students who know nothing when you don't know not anything your group assignment is especially difficult to find group members and now it's an online class which makes it even worse and in the beginning, you may start very hard don't understand what the lecturer is talking about assignment doesn't yet know how to start. There must be many things to learn if I were enrolled into my ideal research field. During the past high school years, I have learned a lot of knowledge and practical skills, but gradually I realized it's not enough. In my opinion, further study is actually urgent for me to realize and finally achieve some value. Because life is precious, it is necessary to catch any opportunity for self development, especially in this modern society. Therefore, I prefer to go on for further study. What's more, to facilitate further academic research, I will build up a solid foundation of computing and technology in theory throughout my school life. Besides, I also have some precious academic experience in practice, which will benefit my research in the future. I enjoy the sense of accomplishment when converting my creative ideas into the useful devices. I consider myself as a determined and discreet person with a strong sense of responsibility and broad horizons. As I learn more about my major, I get to be more interested in it and desire to explore it and more profoundly. I hope to learn more theories and greater thinking and analytical approaches. I would also like to have a more in-depth understanding of translation combined with my previous experience and make my own contribution in this field. I realize that computing is a bridge connected our country with the outside world. Learning computing is the most direct and available me method for intercourse among countries and also useful for us to get advanced knowledge and technology from others. As an old saying girls, interest is the best teacher. I'm very interested in my major. Although the past few years study enriched my knowledge and practical skill, I still feel it's not enough for me to achieve my goal. Maybe I just do many things at superficial level. So I'm eager to further my study to broad horizons and learn more about my major. I choose the APU University as it is my ideal institution for its good academy atmosphere and located in such a charming city. Last but not least, Knowing what you want and what your values are is a good beginning of learning how to master your own motivation. When you can control your motivation to overcome difficulties, you will be able to accomplish what you want in life. That's all from me. Now I will pass the time to Diraj. Thank you. Hello, everyone. 
uh, before I proceed, uh, my name is Dear Singil. I'm currently in my second SEM of a Diploma in Business Administration in APU. And just to start off, when I got my SPM results, I realized that I wouldn't be able to do foundation because I, I don't really have the credits to do foundation. So instead, uh, I looked at the opportunity of uh, doing a diploma, but to do a diploma, you would have to know, you, have, you would have to know, um, you have to know what you want to be specific. And uh, at that time, I would see all my friends uh, talking about how they could, uh, they, are, they want to, you know, instantly go into uni so they don't miss out, you know, they don't fall back, fall, fall behind others. And basically, whatever job opportunities that uh, come in front of them, they would be the first to have it. But at that time, uh, in the back of my head, I was thinking, if I rush into uni, I know I would regret it because if I choose the wrong course, especially if it's diploma, you, 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 you're learning something specific. I, I know that it would uh, cause regret for me and it would make me feel very unsatisfied with my whole future. So instead, I took the time to to learn more about myself, to find out the characteristics and what what do I like, how, like, um, how am I as a person? What kind of person am I? So, as I learned more about myself, I explored more, I traveled more, I learned about the world more. Uh, I started to realize that I like helping people, and I like um, basically I like helping people recover from you know, any mental health issues. I like uh, talking to them and I like uh, making them feel better if they are down. So I uh, explored the idea of uh, going into uh, psychology. But along the lines, I realized that opportunities don't really uh, exist in Malaysia for psych psychology. In fact, uh, there are, but there's not much. So I, I dug deep inside myself more. I, I explored more. And soon I realized that I'm a more of a business-minded person. And so I started to explore like every university's modules and try to see which one is the most perfect one for me. And uh, every other university's model, I'd say they are so, they're incredibly business-minded. And most of them, uh, they don't focus much on improving yourself. They focus more on your skills in business. But the thing I saw with APU's module is that they help you improve your soft skills as well as your hard skills, which is a win-win for me. And uh, when, I, when I looked through the modules a few times again, I realized that, yeah, this is what I want to do. Like this, these modules and everything, like they resonate with me and they, they, I know I can do well because these are the subjects that I would I have interest, even though I haven't learned, learned it yet. So that was a plus point for me. And uh, it's been, I would say, uh, second SEM. It's been almost like, uh, you'd say a few of like five months, four months maybe, of me studying a diploma. And APU has been really treating me well. I thought it would be a challenge to study online. And uh, I thought it would be hard for me to learn, but uh, I was wrong. APU has really made it easy for me. And uh, the app, they have an app called App Space, uh, which is so easy to use. It gives you access to any information you want about the university. There's a student handbook, you know, so you know the rules, the do's and don'ts. And uh, to me, it makes uh, the students' lives easier. Avoid stress for all the students. And some people may find it hard to still study online. But in, in my opinion, uh, APU has been doing well with the online learning and I really enjoy my classes even though it's online. I have fun when I'm in the classes. Uh, so I hope everyone is excited to start their journey in their university life and I wish everyone good luck in their future endeavors. So that's all for me. I'll pass back to Ms. Hasmira to continue. Thank you so much, Deeraj, uh, for your sharing session. All right. Um, 
Okay, so uh, thank you for your sharing, everyone. Okay, I hope the sharing, uh, sharing session helps um, all of you out there to decide on the right pathway for your pre-university studies. All right, now we can move on to the Q&A session. Okay, all of you out there, please feel free to drop off um, your questions in our comment box. Okay, um, so the first question will be, okay, um, from... Firdaus Muhammad, how is uh, APU Foundation different? Okay, okay. okay, I think I'll take that. Okay, Firdaus, thank you for the question. Okay, so basically, I think you have heard it all just now, okay? So there's uh, some of, uh, I mean, um, especially like the activities that we do and all that. Yeah, you can see that it is, uh, we don't just emphasize on academic alone. Yes, yeah, so there's a lot of uh, outside the classroom. Okay, the non-academic factor, which is so important, and uh, mainly because we also um, emphasize a lot on skills. Okay, we emphasize a lot on skills. So it's not just about at the end of the day, okay, you get that academic qualification. We also look at character building, example. Okay, because we think far, like, you know, at the end of the day, it's, uh, uh, we're going to focus on employability. Okay, so a lot of skills are important. If you look at our program itself, yeah, our program itself, you will see that, you know, we have uh, modules such as public speaking. We have modules such as communication skills. Okay, like earlier, uh, Ms. Anuradha uh, told you about personal development. Okay, and um, so we have this kind of uh, uh, modules, okay, that doesn't just offer, um, these modules don't just offer the academic side of it, yeah, like I just said. So soft skills, very, very important, and we have incorporated all that into our program. And the other thing, how we are so different is that uh, we have some kind of flexibility here. So our foundation program is not just like foundation in engineering, okay, uh, foundation in computing. So it's not so much like a diploma. So it is not so very focused. So we offer some kind of flexibility. Like the example I gave you earlier, supposing you start off in engineering and then you realize that, you know, you want to go into, say, computing, you have that opportunity. We offer you that kind of opportunity. So you have a bit of those kind of flexibility. Yeah? Okay, so I hope that answers the question. Okay, I hope uh, Fredos that helps. Um, I mean to answer your doubts. All right. Okay. Uh, next question. Uh, we have from Hanan Hazran. If student is planning to join degree related to multimedia VR AR, which foundation pathway student should consider? Okay. At foundation, okay, we have got these four roads. Okay, so we have the computing. Okay, so we have uh, business finance, we have design, and we have engineering. Okay, so like uh, most students, like uh, supposing, okay, like you know that you want to do something in computing, but you may not be very certain what exactly in computing that you want to do. So what we do is that we, um, uh, we get students to join the computing route. Okay, so when you join the computing route, Okay, you're very much uh, ready to choose a degree program. Okay, not just in uh, multimedia VR, because in uh, foundation uh, program itself, okay, when you do the computing route, you would have gotten introduction to multimedia. We have a module, okay, on introduction to multimedia. Then we have basic programming. We have like... Um, EWP, we have uh, perspectives in technology. So we introduce you to all uh, this kind of modules. Okay, so it would be foundation program, the computing route. Okay, we have different routes. So it will be the computing route. Okay, so I hope that answers yeah. the question. All right. All right. Um, there are no more questions, I oh, hope. Okay. Thank, you. Uh, thank you so much, for uh, Dr. Savinder, for your sharing. All right. Uh, all right. So thank you for, to all the speakers for today. Okay. Uh, just time is, I think, is almost over now. Okay. okay. Today's session, we are going to end it here. Okay. So we are going to have the next session. 
uh, later 8 p.m. Okay, uh, for the topic of create the spark of uh, on entrepreneurship at APU. Okay, so to everyone out there, okay, stay tuned and follow our Facebook page. Okay, to know more updates. Okay, once again, please join our e open day. Okay, thank you so much, um, Dr. Savinder, Miss Nelfi, and Miss Anuradha, as well as Trazinji and Diraj Singh. Okay, for today. Uh, okay, uh, that's all for today. Good evening. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.